Hello, and thank you for listening to Be Insured. My name is Luke Mardigan, the owner of the Mardigan Agency in St. John's, Michigan. And a lot of people ask me why we have a radio show, and it's it's simply because we've been able to do something that is very rare in the captive insurance agent space, and that is we have a self-managing team and a sales team that is fully scalable. And what that's allowed us to do is grow a book size that's about double the size of your average captive insurance agent in our company. And today we are going to talk about what type of insurance agency we are and the two types of insurance agents you should absolutely avoid. And joining me today are the people I forgot, my co-host. Eric Gastring, the Mardigan Agency. And our special guest. Alec Nuremberg, the Director of Operations for the Mardigan Agency. Yeah, yeah. TMA in the house. So Luke brought up that we're a unique agency. We're a unique insurance agency, and there's actually three types of insurance agents are, are we, out there. Are we unique? We're unique. Very unique. We are very unique. But in more ways than we can it's the, share. It's, it's the most unique agency. Yeah. It's, it's the best. We're, we're pretty amazing. You won't find a more <laughs> unique agency in the world. But it's quite unique. So, Luke, can you tell us about there? there's three different types of agents? I want you to break that down. Yeah. So, there are sheep, wolves, and sheepdog. Interesting. We, we are the sheepdog. But there are wolf agents and there are sheep agents, and you should avoid them at all costs. What should they look for? Well, I'm going to read from a book called On Killing by retired Lieutenant Colonel David Grossman. Uh, On Killing is, was one of the first, uh, he's a West Point graduate, one of the first studies of um, how soldiers have actually killed in war over time. It's been pretty popular. A, a, a version of it was read in uh, the Chris Kyle story, American Sniper movie. Um, you see this in a lot of police circles and in military circles. So this is not a, a unique to me, and I give complete credit to, to Dave Grossman on this. Uh, he expounded upon it, and it really set the precedent. And then I I, one day I just kind of woke up and go, that's how insurance agents are too. That's kind of how our industry is. So I'm going to read about it. Uh, he says, uh, we know that sheep live in denial. That is what makes them sheep. They do not want to believe that there's evil in this world. They cannot accept, they can't accept the fact that fires can happen, which is why they want fire extinguishers, fire sprinklers, fire alarms, fire exits throughout their kids' schools. But many of them are outraged at the idea of putting an armed police officer in their kids' schools. Our children are dozens of times more likely to be killed and thousands of times more likely to be seriously injured by school violence than by school fires. But the sheep's only response to the possibility of violence is denial. The idea of someone coming to kill or harm their children is just too hard, so they just choose the path of denial. The sheep generally do not like the sheepdog. So when it comes to agents, I'm going to pause there. When it comes to agents, the sheep agents are the ones who, don't worry about it. It, this is get you the best price. That's what matters the most. They're completely transactional. They don't want to know any details. They don't ask a lot of questions. They just write a policy. It's like my first policy. When I was 18 years old, I bought my dad's truck after he passed away and uh, got a loan on it, went and got my own insurance. And the guy literally was sitting behind a computer monitor, a computer monitor between him and me. And he's just typing away, rapping on the keyboard. And then he prints it off and he slides it over. He's like, well, that's, that's your quote right there. And I was like, okay, it's 225 bucks a month. That's the number because I was a ton of money in 2004. Yeah. And, Especially um, at 18. Yeah, I was making like right. 600 bucks a week or yeah, something right. like that or 500 bucks a week, something like that. Um, and uh, I'm like, okay. He's like, how do you want to pay? I was like, I got my checkbook with me because you still wrote checks in 2004. <laughs> and, uh, and he's like, okay, sounds good. And he prints the application off, brings the application over. I need you to review this and sign on the last page. And then you can take me the check out too, blah, 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 whatever. And I'm like, okay. And then I walked out with my certificate and I had no clue what I bought. He didn't ask me questions about like how much money I made and how, what kind of health insurance I had. And um, there's a lot of things that are important, important probably. Yeah. It, well, sheeps, sheep only know how to follow the white butt in front of them. Right. Right. They can't think for themselves. They can't think independently. They're not advisors. They assume they're in the, going in the right direction because, because everybody the, everything in front of them yeah. is going in the right direction. And, right. and when you're watching Super Bowl Sunday and you see State Farm, you know, Progressive, uh, Geico, Liberty Mutual, uh, my kids even quote, you know, the Liberty Biberty thing, you know. And, so do I. Uh, yeah, you do too. Yeah, <laughs> Jay does too. It's 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 uh, annoying. Um, uh, and, <laughs> and when you listen to those, they're just telling you, look, there's only one way to think, and it's like a sheep. You should just pay the cheapest you can for insurance. As a matter of fact, if you don't want to pay your deductible, you don't even have to do that. It costs you money, but we don't tell you that part. We just tell you that we'll forgive your accident. Yeah, uh, sounds and your great. Deductible, and it costs more to not have a deductible. And blah, blah, blah. Anyways, um, that, that's the sheep, right? And the sheep, just like it says in there, he's using violence. The sheep don't want to think about you actually having a claim. 
The sheep don't want to consider that perhaps when you walk out of their door, you could pull out onto that. That time it was in Grand River in East Lansing, Michigan. I'm not going to say what insurance agency it was, and um, right down the road from Whole Foods, and uh, I and you could get hit by another car and die. And he didn't even talk to me about life insurance because the sheep agent does not want to consider that you might actually use your insurance. As a matter of fact, they don't want you to use your insurance. And if you do, they want it to be a, sm- a little amount as paid out as possible so that they protect their loss ratio so they can get their bonuses. That's the sheep agent and must be avoided at all costs. They are passive. They, you only hear from them when you call them. They never reach out to you for reviews. And when it comes time for someone to be an advocate for you because you need help, because you have a claim that maybe the insurance company is not willingly paying, that, not that that's ever happened in insurance companies ever. Uh, you can just Google insurance companies that don't pay claims, and you'll find all the lawsuits out there. Um, Aggressive. Um, and, excuse you, and uh, it's when that, when that time comes, your sheep agent will do what sheep do and go, Bah, and do nothing. Sheep, right. sheep just eat, bah, and, and poop, and walk. And that's all they do, right? They're not going to help you. They're not going to fight for you. They're not going to be in the trenches with you. They're not going to be wrapping a blink around you when you're, as you watch your house burn down in ashes. Uh, they're going to make you go through years of litigation when it probably could have been prevented by just doing their job. And that may be the most toxic, arguably. You know, the law of large numbers says, you know, if you have enough of a number, you're going to have a claim there. But yep. the, but if that insurance agent just neglects the idea of well, something hold. happening to any single one of them, I mean, that's it's very selfish and toxic. And yeah. I mean, uh, your it family, shows what they're in. Your family experienced a, a sheep agent. Yeah, firsthand. Right? Yeah. And it changed our lives forever. So what holds back a sheep from achieving like the Mardigan agency? Uh, they, they don't, they don't care about protecting. Yep. Bottom line. There's other motives there. Yep. And who knows what it is. They're, right. They're, buy, they're buying time. They're, I feel like it's a lot more selfish than it is it, anything else. It, it is. Right? It lacks professionalism, right? Like, how can you be an insurance agent and not develop yourself professionally so that you understand and are acutely aware of the risks that your client has right. so that you can talk through those and, and, and present uh, at least present options for them to protect themselves, right? Uh, you can lead a horse to water. You can't make them drink. And insurance, it's so true. You can, you could literally. I mean, obviously, you could go overboard with it. If you go overboard with it, then that's the other type of agent that we'll talk about. Um, and make people buy every policy on the planet that insures against every. I mean, you know. Right. Yeah. Let's get into the wolf. You want to get in the wolf? Yeah. How about we go? I'll, I'll continue reading, and we'll see where Lieutenant Colonel Dave Grossman goes with this. One of my heroes here. Um, the sheep generally do not like the sheepdog. This is true. Sheep. Agents do not like sheepdog agents. They will lie, cheat, and steal before they let a sheepdog come in and do what sheepdogs do. I've experienced it firsthand. Why? Because the sheepdog looks a lot like the wolf. He has fangs and the capacity for violence. The difference, though, is that the sheepdog must, cannot, and will not ever harm the sheep. Sheep being the clients in this instance. Yes. Any sheepdog who intentionally harms the lowliest little lamb will be punished and removed. Uh, And that's a polite way of putting that. The world cannot work any other way, at least not in a representative democracy or republic such as ours, okay? Or a free market like the insurance world, right? Still, the sheep disturbs the sheep. He is a constant reminder that there are wolves in the land. That's why sheep don't like the sheepdog, because they think the sheepdog is a wolf, because he's got fangs and he barks and has a capacity for violence. Yes. Nips at their feet, right? And tells them t- tells them to do their job. You know, right? when, when everything's rainbows and butterflies, nobody really wants to, you know, accept authority because yeah. everything's just We're all great. sleeping. Why yeah. are you barking? There's nothing right. out There's there. No, we, don't we don't need, need protection. I, I don't need special form. I'm fine with broad form. How much does it save? Seventy dollars a year? Yeah, yeah. I, that's fine. I, I'd rather have Dish Network than and pay for protection that I don't need. Right. Because there's no wolf out there. There's no one trying to hunt me down. This, so they would pref- uh, the sheep would prefer that the sheepdog didn't tell them where to go or give them traffic tickets or stand it ready in our airports and camouflage fatigues holding M16s, which is uh, reality in many parts of the world. The sheep would much rather have the sheepdog cash in his fangs, spray paint himself white, and go... Bah. Until the wolf shows up. Then the entire flock tries desperately to hide behind one lonely sheep 
As Kipling said in his poem about Tommy, the British soldier, while it's Tommy this and Tommy that and Tommy fall behind, but it's pleased to walk in front, sir, when there's trouble in the wind. There's trouble in the wind, my boys. There's trouble in the wind. Oh, it's pleased to walk in front, sir, when there's trouble in the wind. Everyone wants the sheep agent who just makes it easy, no big deal, it's fine, you don't need all that. I'm not going to have the hard conversation about life insurance until something bad happens. Yep. And then you know who you know the first phone call is when someone dies? After a family knows all that stuff, when they start getting into the affairs of the individual, you know when the first persons they call is? Insurance. Their insurance. Did they have any life insurance? And the sheep can only say, bah, no, I'm a bad agent. I, I, I'm I, lazy. I, I really didn't want to have that card conversation, so I just, I, I don't want to look like a wolf. So what's a wolf? Yeah, what is a wolf? Well, a sheep is really only somebody who just doesn't want to be a wolf because they're not, they don't have the capacity to be a sheepdog. And we'll talk about that. But the wolf is the high pressure, buy everything, pay more if I make you. Just keep biting pieces. I'm just going to go after you and take pocket share, right? They, they, they say things like, we want more pocket share and we need to round out the account and upsells and this, this language that is void of personal touch, right? The sheepdog care about the sheep. The wolf wants to consume the sheep. The sheepdog right. live with the sheep. The sheepdog eat the same food. Yep. They, they walk the same area. They serve the same master, right? They care about the clients, but the wolf only wants to consume them. And so there's a fine line between sheepdogs and wolves, and sheepdog can feel Definitely. a whole lot like a wolf, right? Because yep. they got the fangs and the bark and the, you know, the, the hair puffs up when they get you know, angry right. or, or defensive, you know, and they're passionate, right? Uh, I, I have a border collie. Every dog I've ever owned has been a sheepdog, a German Shepherd, a Shetland Sheltie, and a border collie. And all of them, I mean, it's incredible the instincts they have, right? And the way they move and the Absolutely. way that, you know, like Taser, you know, she's on her last legs here, but, you know, she used to literally walk around with her head down like she's hunting wolves in the backyard, you know? There's no wolves. Protecting your family, her yeah. sheep. Right? Hurting your my kids, you know, gently hurting them, never nipping at them, stuff like that. Um, but it looks a lot like the wolf. It scares them. So everyone, the challenge is our agency's a sheepdog agency. We care about protecting them. We, we want to be the ones who um, are there to fight on their behalf when the wolf comes knocking at their door, right? And the wolf being a claim. Something bad happens. Reality is no one gives a crap how good of an insurance agent you are until they have a claim. Right. It is And ideally they won't they won't know it at all. You know, they I don't think they want to I hope they never find out with you. Yeah, right. right. They, we don't want them to find <laughs> yeah. out ideally. It's it, funny because the sheep will be viewed that way. Yes. Because they're buddy buddy and friends and Oh yeah, seem I'm sure cool. they're taking great care of me. Yep. They're, they're totally protecting yeah. me. And but you don't know. They don't have the tough conversations. They don't make me uncomfortable. I like them. Yep. Right. Yeah, there's the sheep agent, you know, it's right. great. Well, I don't when, know. I, my, my favorite is, I like my guy, he's, he's fine. Uh, but you're underinsured by a million dollars. Yeah, I know, but, you know, I really like him. I just don't think it's... You said he's never brought up life insurance. Yeah, you know. You have four kids? Yeah, I'm all set. <laughs> and when a sheepdog tries to provide direction, that can seem almost insulting maybe at times because it's something that's uncomfortable and you're exposing a risk right. that they didn't know yes. they faced. You know, it's something that they... They didn't agree with before because they didn't know it existed. Just like it's and uncomfortable really it's just, when, when a sheepdog bumps up against you and nicks exactly, you on your heel yeah. to stop you from going off a cliff. Right. Right. Yeah. That's like, direction. That's yeah. real life, right? Because right. uh, border collies and Shetland Shelties come from the Shetlands of Ireland, Ireland yeah. and where they literally have cliffs. Yeah. Like their sheep are next to cliffs. And so that, the, the sheepdog are the only thing stopping them from falling to peril, complete peril, yeah. mm -hmm. which in our world is, is typically it's. You're more likely to have a cyber attack that leads to bankruptcy or, or some type of getting sued and having a bankruptcy than you are dying of life, for, you know, needing life insurance. Right. Um, so it's, you know, we're trying to stop you from financial peril, trying to stop your future generations if you die from financial peril, because the stats are clear. If you die without life insurance, you're looking at two generations of poverty minimum. That's So that right there should be enough information for those other agents, the sheeps and the wolves to take take notice and be like, man, I don't want to be that. Make I don't want to do that. So, so, so adopt and, compassion, yeah. you know, care. We, have we challenge you to, to change. Yes. Yeah. Uh, if, if you're a wolf currently start caring or get in another industry 
right. get out of the insurance agency. Go Giving sell cars or something that where nobody they don't care if you care. It doesn't matter if you care. And insurance, you got to care. This is this is our, people's everything is, is protected by insurance. And for your average human in America today, they're living paycheck to paycheck, and they need that insurance really bad. Or come see us, and we can show you how to. We can show you how to adopt those yes. values. And Which it's usually easier to show sheep how to become sheepdog yes. than it is for, to, to teach wolves to become sheepdogs. So if you're a sheep and you want to become a competent agent who cares about your clients, protects them properly, go to lsm.consulting. I have a free ebook on there about uh, a virtual advising, which is kind of our today world that has a lot of those concepts in it. That's lsm.consulting, and it'll be right on that homepage. So thank you so much for listening uh, on this episode on sheep, sheepdog dog and wolves insurance agents and make sure you check us out at the martigan agency on facebook and instagram that's at the martigan agency and we'll see you next time on be insured